since uh, Humanonet was founded in 2002, we had focused initially on field communications, which for the most part was satellite communications in remote areas or in disaster zones where people couldn't get internet or even voice communications. And in the course of, uh, of our experience with NGO humanitarian people, and trips I took to Indonesia following the tsunami and it exercises with the ADRA, Caritas, and the World Vision organizations in Asia, we found out that they're happy to have connectivity and they need it and they realize that in any disaster or emergency response, but they also need something called situational awareness, a big picture or what is sometimes called a common operating picture of the whole area. For example, Cyclone Gargis last year in Burma or Myanmar, uh, knowing which airports were open, uh, where the supplies were going, what roads were in, where the flood areas were, could be posted. Well, two years ago, we had uh, Matt Blair and I and other supporters and volunteers got an interest in online maps, digital maps. We know that there are uh, hundreds and hundreds of different solutions, many of them very sophisticated and, and hard to support and require special skills. Uh, but we thought that there could be a similar model, such as we've used for Humanidad, for sharing information about best practices with online or digital maps. Uh, we actually were one of the finalists in a competition that NetSquare put on uh, back in 2006, and, uh, or maybe that was 2007, I stand corrected. Uh, a very uh, good experience for us. And since then, we found that there's just an ever-increasing interest in how to use maps to advantage for nonprofit organizations in North America or around the world, and for humanitarian purposes, not just disasters. Uh, so with the help of some donors and supporters, and particularly a, a wonderful grant from the Meyer Memorial Trust, uh, we began to pursue last year a fairly systematic study into how to build a community of practice and what the advantages would be of having online maps specifically Google Earth, Google Maps, and similar tools to support humanitarian teams. Well, we found out that they are really valuable. Uh, sometimes relief teams will fly into an area in Asia or other remote parts of the world and not have any map at all of where they're going. They may not know where they are. But with a very simple handheld GPS or some other means, they can locate themselves. The information that's critical to mission success can be posted on that map. Uh, one thing led to another, and we did a, an experiment in Thailand last year as part of the uh, exercise there on disaster response. It was a flood scenario. And then we were invited by Multnomah County to do this exercise here with uh, Cascadia Apparel for the first time engaging volunteers from around the United States who are, as we speak, posting critical hospital and transportation information on a Google Maps in an exercise scenario. And the beauty of what we're doing here is that it's not real. We have the luxury of getting a debriefing, exchanging information, making mistakes, and learning, uh, basically coming up the learning curve in this exercise. Now for Maps 2.0, generally, we are not sure where it's going to go. Uh, we are looking for real committed people, and they do not have to be GIS experts, geographic information systems, but people that are simply interested in helping to shape and form and steer this community of practice. Uh, we found a couple of organizations that have a real strong interest in that, but again, it's not to find the very best and most uh, complex mapping tools, but simple, easy to use tools, just like the Humanonet model in field communication, just for uh, regular folks to use in their work. So we're very uh, pumped about the results today. We've learned a lot, and we know we're going to keep learning more uh, in the debriefing with the county.